Ladies, gentlemen, and uh, cats of the internet, this is Captain Goof here with the first crack of the Banner Saga by Stoic Games. The turn-based strategy role-playing game. And as you might remember, this was kickstarted and was one of the earlier successes, raising about $720,000. Moreover, the founders of Stoic are mostly longtime industry veterans, including former leads of Star Wars The Old Republic from Bioware. Take a quick look at the options menu, and uh, there's not much here. You can change the difficulty, you can go full screen or windowed mode. I'm playing a windowed mode, and I will mention that although it remembers the position, it does not remember the size of the window, so I had to explicitly size this for recording and view the credits. Um, there's no volume sliders, just uh, music on or off, sound on or off, music on or off. All there. You got some interesting heraldry stuff, so these are all the crests you can choose for your clan. And these are crests from the uh, Kickstarter backers. Uh, people? Really? How many cool ones in here? That looks cool. That looks awesome. I'm using that. I don't know who designed this crest, but he's cool. All right, we've got an awesome crest. Let's get into it. So one thing is this really is kind of a role-playing game, and not in just in the mechanical sense of like a D&D &D or, a, or a role master or Shadowrun or what, what have you. It's uh, more in the sense of, the, think of like a choose-your-own-adventure book. All right? You're going to make a decision based on whatever you feel, and it's actually going to have an effect on the game. So you... The idea really is to promote replayability and, you know, uh, making different choices. But, you know, there's also no real save feature in the game. And there's a very limited number of save slots. So you really can't scum it either and kind of experiment with it. Or you can, but in a limited extent. So the animation... Oh, I'll let this go. It has been several long months on the road. The first signs of snowfall accost us on our approach to Strand, the largest of the trade cities on the wild human borders, and our last collection before returning to the capital. Several days ago, the sun simply came to a stop in the sky. Though during these long winter days, none of us can be certain how long it has been this way. Some of the men in the caravan have taken it as a dire omen. I am not quick to superstition, but I myself will be glad to be done with this year's rounds. We have been warned by stranded travelers about brigands on the path through Richhorn, our road home. Our captain seems unconcerned. Perhaps he is as eager as I to be done here. We will rest here this day and inquire further when we speak to the governor. So the animation and art is in the style of Vaven Earl, who's in artist and animator who most of you know for his work in the 50s and 60s for Disney. Interestingly, a lot of the animation is actually rotoscoped. So what they did is they motion captured the live actors and then they took that footage and drew the in-game characters on top of it to get very natural motions for the animation. And the music is scored by Austin Wintory, who you may be familiar with if you've played games like Journey or Monaco. Both of those being fairly recent releases. Alright, we're gonna actually get into some action here. Alright, so one thing that's gonna be, uh, yes, yeah, so we can just click and drag around and actually look at the whole scene. Much going on in the background, just these guys, and again, these were, these were all motion capped. Then they kind of drew on top of the actors. Kind of pretty neat. 
All right, so the order of initiative, left to right. And so one thing that's interesting about this is the turns always alternate unless there's only one enemy remaining. And that's mostly to uh, prevent the enemy from having a ridiculously unfair advantage. So it's always alternating turns. So one thing you really need to do is actually look quite a ways ahead to see who is going to act uh, and when. All right, Shieldbanger is active, so we're just going to follow this here. Gonna move here. Permit. Okay, I'm gonna click the tile, and uh, we can do strength damage. There we go. So damage is very simple. It's your strength minus the enemy's armor. So nine minus two it will do seven damage. Armor is something you can ship away, but it's not really the most important thing in the world. Actually, your strength is really important. So your strength is also actually your hit points. So, even if I brought him down to one health, he would only, at most, be able to do one damage. Actually, if I think the strength is lower than your armor, you actually can deflect it completely. But it's an interesting way to look at it. By doing damage, you prevent damage. Although, sometimes it's actually better to just kind of sunder their armor and just do the damage. You also have willpower here, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Yep, see, both health and damage. And I just went over this. Okay, let's do that. And stab him. Alright. And we get Renown, which is basically currency. Alright. And here comes the Chieftain. Does one whole damage. Alright. So we can spend some of our willpower here, up to two a turn, to actually, in this case, it's kind of like a go for it in Blood Bowl. Or you can use it to boost your damage. I'm gonna click his tile, we're gonna bring up his Tempest ability, which is basically a whirlwind. Alright. There we go. This guy is hosed. Okay, so we've got eight strength. All right. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a willpower to do an extra damage, and we'll do nine damage. There he goes. So, simple combat, but allows for a decent amount of strategy, because you do have to plan your moves quite a bit ahead just to anticipate your opponent's moves and what they can do and whether or not it's going to leave you vulnerable. built all this from a poor fishing village, you know. He watched the gods die, watched the chaos that followed, watched man and bar slaughter each other, even before the threats arose. All we've done is traded one struggle for another. Now that there are no more threats to war against, we war against ourselves. This chieftain meant to kill me, and he's not the first. A dozen families in the city would gladly take my chair. This one had men waylaying merchants, both north and south of the city, strangling trade quite well, I would add, though he denied it to his lust. This sort of wolf doesn't stop biting because the head is cut off. It just grows a new head. I am in a bad way, my friend. Help me finish this fight and I'll gladly send you on your way with double our king's tithe. Take any men you need. They're loyal. I promise you that. They will meet you down in the proving grounds. I was about to say, the animation style is not something you've seen really in a long time. You know, it's genuinely gorgeous. Especially for the scenes that are very heavily animated, which is kind of in the minority. Alright. So, most of what we're going to see in the game is not actually voice acted. It is text, like this. Dialogues, like this. All right, and, you know, I'm not going to go through all of this in excruciating detail. I've been through this part a little bit. So, hey, I can do my thing. I'm going to be a nice old man. Nice old, well, giant, really.
Apologies for the spoilers, but to be honest, this is the earliest part of the game. So it's not like you're going to be seeing anything tremendously revealing. Gonna throw his crap on the ground. Oh, burn. All right, I suppose we're going to be a double our usual tithe here if we help this man out and go to the meat house. Yeah, are we really going through the front door? Looks like there's a fight! Fight, 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 fight! Which is really the meat of the game. Boo! And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine! Against our four. Alright. Not really liking that all that much. Um, I know what you do. Yeah, actually, no, I don't know what you do, apparently. You're awesome. You, you spin around and do things to people and make them cry. You, not so much. So actually, I'm gonna mess around with you guys. What do you do? Blocks three damage a hit. Allies and himself. Ooh. I like that quite a bit, actually. Alright, so we can't see the order in which everyone's going to go, but we're going to hit ready. And it's battle time! Alright. So, who is next? He's next, then him, then him. Alright, so we got a couple turns to kind of get into the front row. Move. Five and eight, and I have ten strength. I'm not going to be able to take him down. Note of that. So, what you call it? When do you go? You can go for a bit. You're 15 strength. You're like a truck. Okay. Really doesn't matter all that much. Okay. Here comes the thug leader. Got five armor. I do eight. I could have done that. I'm walking on to nah. We'll just take the strength. Enough. What's coming up after that? We got this guy. These guys will be in my grill soon. Burn a willpower doing that. I gotta kill him. Actually, no, we're not. Um, my mistake there. Should have burnt a willpower on that. I got, got super into the thick of battle. Yep. Our turn prematurely. These guys are going to start... One interesting thing, too, is you move, you have the option to move, then you attack. So if you attack without moving, you cannot move. This is actually really similar to uh, the King's Bounty series. Not, I don't recall if Heroes of Magic did the same thing. Nope, he... Wow. That was interesting and somewhat impressive. A lot of damage, actually. Hmm. We can gang up on this guy. Not burn any willpower either. And what's attack? Ah! 
Can't do much if you don't have your strength. Okay, this is this is more my liking. Um, so that's six, six, eight, six, eight, six. Got twelve. I think this is what I want. Go. They're nearly dead. Got this scrub. So there is a little bit of overlap problems. We're just gonna kill him. Here we are. Look at that, he stabbed me. He stabbed me in the freaking face. All right, so what can we do here? Where can we go? I don't have a ton of strength. He's got a lot of armor. They all got a lot of armor. Ugh. That's actually best. his abilities? What does Rally do? Two, two willpower. Nah, let's not do that. And let's... Screw him up! That's gonna be really interesting when he gets to go next. I really, oh wow, I pity these guys. Look at this, yeah! Okay, so it's not a full 360. That's kind of weak sauce, but I'll take it. All right, he's starting to be a little hurt. That's fine, we're, we're doing well. Basically got this in the bag. That's kind of a problem, actually, that he's, uh, he's actually that vulnerable. Who's next? Him and him. I want to kill him. No. no. Him. Actually, no. Um, get the heck out. You are messed up, sir. Might be in trouble. Oh, yeah, I lost him. That is my bad. He's dead. Really? I think he's just injured. can recuperate later on if not well I'm in a lot of trouble because he's probably a story character all right so we're gonna go down so everything is usually based on some sort of a map so this is the map of the area we're in. You know, we could interact with Meat Hall, we could interact with this, and now we can interact with the docks before we were at the market. Old men. Trying to, trying to prevent you from the spoilers. So we'll talk to Mr. Governor here.
So there is, as I mentioned, a lot of text and very little voice acting. And also the voice acting actually isn't captioned, so just a heads up on that. If you're not a big fan of a lot of story, don't worry, you can kind of gloss over it pretty quick. But there is a fair amount of it. Supposedly the game's about 10, 10-ish hours in length. For, the, for me, the meat of the gameplay is the combat. Go have a drink with this guy. I think you'll notice actually with the animation for a lot of the cutscenes, aside from the you know, one we had in the beginning, is it's actually very subtle. You know, their eyes will move around. Feel like a tassel that blows or a sleep that blows in the wind. And although music is pretty good, uh, there's actually not a ton of it. You kind of get like a little, a little snippet of music, a little taste of music, and that's it. There's you know no more of the rest of the meal. Get some renown, and we're ready to move out. I think you also notice too is we have uh, days of supplies. It also shows how big our uh, our crew is and our morale, our currency, how many days we spent. But the days of supplies is interesting because you actually need them. Uh, think of this as kind of like an Oregon Trail with you know Vikings. Are we going to, uh, yeah, we'll see to Vetterfell. I'm gonna drink a little. Now, some of these events, you know, probably have very little, uh, very little to do with anything, but it's interesting to see what the effects will be over time as you go through your entire playthrough. So this here is your, kind of like your camp, and you'll enc encounter that periodically, actually. So here's the world map. Here's where we are, here's where we came from. I'm assuming we can go back. Tells us all about things, about places. Kind of pan around. This is, this is the world, so to speak. Pretty big. I don't think you can really choose the route. I think it's somewhat uh, decided for you based on your actions. I think we're gonna head out in a moment, but this here is your camp, and this is kind of where you manage your caravan and you can upgrade your allies. So you got the hero's tent, which you can basically look at your roster. Can still fight by the penalty of the max rank, equal to the number of days wounded. He heals time passes, so he needs a day to uh, to heal. Gunolf, he's promoted, so he's gotten his two kills. Okay. Promote him. We build stats and increase our item rank. Okay. Promote for five renown? Yeah, sure. So we've got two stat points. We can't do anything here. I think. No. We get a nice uh, info about his abilities and I mean, look at this. So he's a warhawk, and I think there's a basic class system. Uh, there's also items you can buy with your renown. Um, and characters only have a single item slot. So if you're looking at like something like a Final Fantasy tactic, you can do a lot of character customization. <laughs> You really can't. So these are actually the stat points you currently have available, like we have a skill, and this is how many you could potentially have at your rank or, you know, your level. So we have 7 armor, we could have up to 12, we have 15 strength, we could have up to 18, you know, we have 3 willpower. Um, on it, so this is actually bringing it up. So exertion is the amount of willpower you can use in a turn. Um, and I consider that to be pretty useful. Um, how much damage you naturally do to enemies is armor. I actually consider it to be really useful as well. Have that. And he needs five kills for his next rank. We've got Ludin, who hasn't been in combat yet. Hakon, who hasn't been in combat yet. And Mogar, who hasn't actually killed anybody. We've had like other bit characters kind of help out. Order of the 
go their turns. Guys, go and have him just kind of do. Some We've got training, so we can kind of futz around with things. We've got rest, and we can do that. Oh, we're going to rest for a day. And the reason why is Gunolf is ready to go. See? And we're going to leave and head on our merry way. Weddlefell. Even the name means bad weather, where frozen wind sweeps in from the bay. They tend livestock, but most are just men driven from strand with nowhere else to go. Why else would anyone stay? We won't stop long. Bit ominous. We got some cow thieves. All right. Let's see what we can do about some cow thieves here. Oh! Wants to make a waypoint. Useful when you want to avoid certain tiles. Ah! That's handy. Right banner. Okay, so this is the fuck chance, actually. Oh, this is the chance to hit, rather. Strength and armor is equally important. Yeah, this guy's got. Wow, this guy's got 15 armor. Oh, that is rough. <laughs> wow, that sucks. Alright, so what do you got for abilities? You have Sundering Impact. Plus one strength, plus one break the target, plus one break the heavy impact. Okay. I'm gonna move. Uh, let's move him right here. The Sundering Impact onto this bad boy. And yes, add the willpower. That is serious as all hell. Oof. That's unfortunate. I do. Bring the pain. Yeah, we're, we're kind of done. Alright, so let's uh, get up here. And we have Tempest, which is going to do much, which is attack. Break his armor. Should have put a willpower into it, didn't think about it though. Wow. Dude hits like a truck. Damage can I do to him? Not a lot. Wow. That is horrible. Yeah, he's still got eight armor. Yeah, he's getting ticked off. Jeez. What can I do to this guy? Nothing. Gunolf just ate it. Now at least he's doing some real damage now. Ow, oh, these guys got so much armor. Whenever an enemy falls in battle, willpower star is added to your horn. Ah, nice.
can't bring the pain, I can't attack. Chewing through his armor at this point. I'm having trouble getting through his. Alright, I'm gonna mess this guy up. There we go. Gotta say, for you know, what's a fairly early battle, <laughs> I've actually been killed twice. Well, knocked out. And there's a real penalty for that too, because you have to rest, which means you have to consume supplies, which, you know. I haven't seen the chance to buy them yet. Folks, this is the Banner Saga. It is available on Steam for, I think, $25. Available for both Windows and Mac OS, though they're looking to possibly bring it to other platforms in the future. Actually, the whole interface is pretty conducive to touch. So, maybe an iPad version. Who knows? This is Captain Goof, signing off. <laughs>